day three, last day. Let's do it. We are here for it, and of course, we've read your comments. You said to hit up Mossberg, a couple of others, so we'll be hitting them today. And our current giveaway at ClassicFarms.com, you can find right there, Barrett Mitty 2A1, code word what? 2A. Don't miss out. Well, let's go hit up some of these guys. Let's do it. All right, we are over here at the Leapers booth. We have David. David's been so great at SHOT Show that we just decided to slide back over here and do it again. So you guys have some long-range scopes. Tell us a little bit about those. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for Glenn and uh, Katie and Classic Arms team and come to visit again. Uh, I would like to uh, appreciate uh, the feedback that we have seen from uh, your uh, video at the SHOT Show. So. Uh, this, uh, after the SHOT Show, really, we have listened to all the on-site reviews as well as uh, the customers who provide the feedback. So we uh, nailed down a number of uh, area for improvement as well as uh, optimization on the optical side, on the feature side, on the adjustment side. Um, the other thing that we have been able to uh, since uh, uh, SHOT Show uh, is that uh, we have uh, created a whole family start with a low power variable that's one to eight then the mid range of three to twelve and three to eighteen and uh, just about a month ago we uh, uh, finished the initial prototype of 4.5 to 27 by 56 for long range. So the uh, uh, most distinct, distinctive uh, features are all the larger field of view, the edge to edge clarity, and the light transmission. So you can really identify the target, stay on the target, and making adjustment comfortably during any outdoor environment and place a shot and follow up. So these are the uh, really distinctive uh, features about the entire uh, Indivirx uh, family. We have uh, received a number of on-site review as well as uh, feedback at the NRE show. So we are preparing for a T&E batch production by 4th of July and starting uh, providing samples to you and many uh, a few experts to do uh, further uh, reviews. So prepare ourselves for the Q3 launch of first low power variable scope, and that's the one to eight. So I'd like to show you uh, the, the new one, which is the, this is the uh, 4.5 to 27. It's still a Nintendo compact uh, portfolio and platform and allow for really tremendous uh, field of view and light transmission really and uh, the other uh, distinctive feature is being able to make adjustment comfortably and stay on the target uh, when you uh, conduct the uh, um, uh, field testing or shooting. So I like, wa want to offer to you if I can hold on to your microphone sure. and you can take a look at the optics, <laughs> all right? Okay. And is that a 34 millimeter tube? That's 34 millimeter tube. Okay. Yeah. And are we? Uh, are you going to make? Are you going to operate in the second focal plane, first focal plane? What are we looking at there? Right now, the uh, entire in Indigrex uh, family is started with low power variable and mid range, three to 12, three to 18, and a long range of all our first focal plane. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to trade really quick. So Thank you. As well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Right. And the close distance adjustment is down to 25 yards for this uh, 4.5 to uh, 27. Yeah. That's uh, the thing is uh, about the integrates I've been conducting along with our team for really low light condition testing and you can really aim the target, identify the target, place the shot during evening hour. I use it at 9 p.m. in Michigan as yeah. well. So yeah. I just want to let you know. That's really, really, uh, 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 I feel very passionate and would like to invite all your customers to have a hands-on and through you and with the T&E, I'm sure uh, we can uh, receive a lot of uh, more feedback and getting ready for Q3 launches uh, later or Q3 and the holiday season. Yeah. yeah. No, well, that's... That's all excellent. And another thing I just noticed too is you guys have the, um, uh, the locking type of caps or turrets. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Yeah. Uh, and that is something I really like because I've had I've had scopes on me before. I've been running, you know, with gear and everything else. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, I hear that 
I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> that's yeah. not good. Right, right? Right. And then I was like, okay, I just lost my complete zero. So yeah. that I like quite a bit. Um, uh, are you able to speak to what the MSRP, something like that, would be on this guy? Okay, the whole range of uh, the Integrix goes out, a low power variable is starting at $1,500 with tremendous, tremendous features and optical performance. And then to the mid range, that's the uh, uh, 18 to $2,000 range. To long range, that's $2,500. So as an MSRP, I'm sure through a promotion, a customer will uh, have the benefit of having a further discount. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And another thing, too, that I think we like so much about UTG is uh, you guys listen to the feedback from the end user. Yes. And then you yes. take that and you're like, okay, cool, let's put that in practice. Let's let's upgrade a product here. Let's release a new type of product. Yes. And then you, again, listen. And uh, I think we talked a little bit, I can't remember if it was on camera or not, at SHOT Show, uh, but I think I asked about the LPBOs in, you know, first focal plan. You said, mm -hmm. hey, that's what guys prefer. It's easier that way. It's, right. We've done videos too, comparing second versus first local plane. Right. Uh, so I mean, it just yeah. So good stuff here, man. Yes, we also have plan. Once we uh, uh, really map out the entire uh, family of Indigrix at this level of performance, we are going to apply lesson learned and really uh, develop the next generation, so-called UTG2 for that mid-range uh, pricing bracket type of scope, but with superior uh, optical performance and features. And so that we can take care of uh, customers uh, with a uh, different uh, need and application, but all enjoy the fine optical performance. Yeah. Well, that's right. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. David, thanks for taking the time, man. Thank you it's, very it's, much. It's always so good to see you. And tell Bo we said hey, all right? All yeah. right, I will. And uh, thank you very much, yeah. and thank your you. viewer yeah. as well. And uh, we welcome your feedback. Yeah. All right? That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Check you. out UTGclassicarms.com. So before we're leaving the uh, UTG booth over here, wanted to hit on something else that you guys got coming. We talked about it at SHOT Show, but it looks like you've got a complete rifle over here now. Well, uh, not complete okay. yet. Yep. We are kind of venturing into uh, uppers and lowers uh, yes. first. Uh, we do obviously make some hand guards um, and everything else, but let me uh, let me show you what's going on here. Okay. Uh, the finishing on this is going to be your uh, class three type two uh, anodizing. Um, this is billet, so you can kind of see here uh, start to finish. Uh, this is 775 uh, T6 aluminum, awesome. yeah. uh, which is a must. Now, one thing that I really like about this is that we were able to shave down the weight light enough to where it is actually lighter than a mil spec forge uh, without sacrificing the integrity. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. uh, for billet, it's pretty unheard of. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's one of the major things that I like about it. Uh, other than that, let me, let me kind of show you. Uh, we'll start kind of at the upper here. Okay. Uh, charging handle, you have easy grip here. Uh, it, it's kind of angled in. You have your forward assist. We have it move forward, which obviously is good for ambidextrous charging handles and left-handed shooters. Right. Now, if you, you look around here, we're, we're not utilizing any roll pins. They're all set screws. Okay. So from the safety selector, uh, forward assist, even even the, the rear detent here yeah, is, that, is yeah. they're set screws. So as a builder myself, yeah. I love the idea. Now, right here, let me show the camera here. You have a cutout perfect for resting your trigger finger. We also have a cutout down here. Uh, we wanted to utilize, uh, we wanted to get rid of all the dead space that we could. Yeah, sure. So one thing you'll notice with most lower receivers is right here, you'll see a shelf. Yeah. And that's a snag point when you're doing reloads. Yeah. So what we did, is we actually cut the face of the trigger guard into the magwell. Yeah. That reduces that snag point, makes for reloads easier and faster. Now, let me break this down for you. Sure, and I, I do gotta say, it looks, I mean, it just looks 
clean, right? Like it just looks at high speed because like you said, it just curves in. There's there's not a whole lot of like jagged angles and stuff like that, which is great because that's less stuff to get yeah, snagged on gear absolutely. and things along those lines. I do like how the Ford Assist is pretty much integrated into the brass deflector. And also too, I haven't seen this design on the upper receiver where the charging handle, and you get a little bit more room to grip the charging handle there. That's that's pretty interesting too. So it looks like you guys actually like are, are shooters and uh, you go out there and you're like, hey, you know what would be kind of cool if we kind of did this or went with that. So pretty interesting designs you got going so far and it looks good. Absolutely, absolutely. The finish is beautiful. Um, you, you don't see any machining marks, no sharp edges. So uh, I, I'm excited for this. As a shooter myself, I'm going to purchase about five of these. So. <laughs> As it should be. All right, so over here you have your uh, buffer detent, right? So you have a steel rod, which is also a set screw, that retains that buffer detent. Oh, that's completely yep. different. Okay. Yep, yep. And then this is common, but uh, in my opinion, it's a must, but um, you have your, your tension screw. So yep. you can put tension on the upper and lower. But even without that, the, it, it's very tight, rock solid. Yeah. So. No, that that is awesome. And I'm going to show the camera that really yep. quick too, because that's just something I haven't really seen before. Uh, that type of, you know, the buffer retaining pin almost is, uh, yeah, I just haven't seen that before. That's very interesting. So you guys did put a lot of thought into this, obviously, and. I'm excited to shoot one. That's that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, because I, I really want to try it out and uh, get out there, run a couple rounds through it, and, and see how it does. Yeah, we'll have to bring you out to our uh, new 100-yard range. Yeah. Test oh, it fun. out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and by the way, so uh, obviously our, our mag well is higher up here, so it'll fit every mag, even drum mags. So Now, something else I'm noticing, too, is we got ambient controls on this guy. We. As far as our uh, mag release, yeah. uh, yes, and safety selector, yes. With that said, this is our standard version. Yeah. So we don't have it with us today, Okay. but we are working on a, a true ambi, so yeah. it'll have your uh, bolt catch on yeah. both sides, yes. a lock and release. Yeah, perfect. So yeah. it's a true ambi. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that. So yeah. no, uh, that's, that's a smart way to go, man. I mean, it's it's one of those things too. Like everybody everybody's talking about ambi. It's it's got to be ambi, you know. Yeah. And, and it Absolutely. and it makes sense. The intuitive controls of a good ambidextrous design just makes sense for for shooters, and it's just easier for reload stuff like that. Um, uh, and and even clearing a gun and being safer with it too. But Absolutely. so I'm glad you guys thought about that too, because that was gonna be my next question yes. if you didn't hop on. Yes. It's like I'm noticing yes. an ambi mag release, ambi safety. Is there a model with coming with a uh, ambi bolt catch release? And yes, there absolutely is and hopefully we'll have it ready for you by SHOT Show. All right, man. Well, hey, we'll be looking forward to it. And of course, uh, by SHOT Show, maybe we'll have at least one of these in that we can uh, take to the range, have some good time with or something like that. Absolutely. Cool. Mike, thanks, man. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Clint. Absolutely, guys. Check out UTG. Guys, we're over here with Mike. So Mike just stopped me and uh, gave me a little little surprise. So Mike, tell me what you just told me. About two weeks ago, I won the contest and won the Sugar Weasel. This man won the Sugar Weasel contest, guys. And <laughs> I don't know what voodoo they use to make that thing so light, but it's amazing. It's awesome. It it's is. awesome. It is. So. It's a good time. So what's your favorite thing about it? Just, it, it's so light, I compared it to my AR-9, and my AR-9 is so heavy compared to that thing, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's a good so, time, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot, guys, we have a current contest of the Mini 2, so a Barrett. Go ahead and get those entries in, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll let you get back to it. All right. Thank you very much. Hello there. We're over here now with Rock Island Auction. We got Greg. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. good. Well, hey, first of all, some of the stuff y'all have uh, uh, every now and then it just blows my mind. Tell me really quick about the pair of Grant re revolvers. The Grant revolvers, uh, I mean, they were estimated one to three million. Blew that estimate out of the water. Hammered 4.4 million. Once you add in the juice, you know, buyer's premium, 5.2 million. That's fantastic. My goodness. And and for those of you that don't know, Rock Island Auction, you guys are an auction site for mm -hmm. just firearms. And you guys come across some really awesome stuff. And that was these pair of Ulysses S. Grant revolvers. Yep. And on top of that, something like, hence the, uh, hello there, Han Solo's gun. Yeah. Yeah. So this, so, this is the gun that... This is not first. Yes, 
This is the, I, I've been telling people all weekend, this is the gun Han shot first it's, with. Yes. To the best of our knowledge, with all of the documentation we have on it, yeah. uh, you know, from where we got it, yeah. and from the ATF getting it over here, yeah. we had to get it imported. Uh, this is from the original 1977 yeah. production, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Um, a lot of the ones that were used in episodes uh, five and six, uh, those were cast resin models. Mm -hmm. Episode four, most of the guns in that, or blasters we'll say, yeah. in that movie yeah. were dolled up real guns. Yes. Yeah. And, and I know they like came from prop yeah. houses. Yeah. And this is uh, this is it. Yeah. Every now and then, you know, you'll see like uh, one of the troopers on Hoth or something like that with an MG34, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I, I see it. You know? Yep. Yep. But it's it's so cool. I'm nerding out over here. Right? Oh yeah. But Same. Uh, but anyway, but now speaking of nerding out, there's a couple of other firearms uh, from the World War II era yes. that you guys have in a case over there. Yeah. We need to let's take a walk over there because you guys got to see this. Greg, what caught my eye on this side over here was first of all the Johnson rifle. Yeah. You just you just don't see a lot of those. No. And the condition that it's in is, I mean, was it refurbed? I mean, it just looks good. No, this uh, is, it's all original. That's probably the best Johnson I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Well said. Right, well, there we go. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the best one I've ever seen. Absolutely fantastic. You know, it's not one of the Dutch contract ones. It's, it's, it's beautiful. As man. issued, unissued. Yeah. That is wild. And of course, we got an M1D over here as well. M1C actually. Yeah. M1C. Okay. Yeah. yeah school you me on tell that. It's got the earlier, the earlier flash hider. Where the M1D, they switched over to the longer, like three prong flash hider. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. And M8, you know, correct M84 scope on it. Yep. It's a fantastic example. Excellent, excellent Winchester M1 carbine right here. I mean, again, as issued. Just, you don't get much better. Still has the early barrel band yep. before they switched over to the bayonet lug barrel wow. band. So yeah, fantastic piece. And that Vietnam trench gun, beautiful. By far, probably best trench gun I've ever seen. And I mean, I love the World War II trench guns. Yes. But there's something about this bayonet mount. It yeah. just looks big and mean. And it's like, okay, that's gonna hold a bayonet, and I can, uh, I can mess some something up with it. Dude, I, you know, I, I just absolutely love the idea of bayonets and slam fires, man. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what more do you need? I've got, I've got, I've got three foot of blade hanging yeah. off of a shotgun, and then I can just slam fire eight rounds. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay, job's done. Yeah, exactly, guys. I mean, uh, buddy of mine, you know, it's a sword, you know. Yeah. That's the point. You can turn your weapon into a pike. It's yeah. <laughs> fantastic, man. Well, guys, check out Rock Island Auction. And, and also, to you guys, you know, it's not just the things that are selling for, you know, $5 million and oh. stuff like that. You guys got stuff all over the place. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I always tell folks, uh, we've got an auction for everybody. We've got a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah. You know, from our Arms and Accessories Day auctions, our Sporting and Collector auctions, to our Premier auctions. Check us out. Yeah. You'll find something you'll like. And you'll guaranteed you will find something in your price range you just yeah. have to look for it yeah absolutely man greg thanks for taking the hey, time absolutely thank you absolutely man and guys again rock island auction we're over here at anderson manufacturing with jeremy jeremy thank you so much for taking time out of your day for us yes ma'am thank uh, you for stopping by yeah of course so i hear you have a new line here we do we do um as we all know the ar-15 line was a bit crazy the last two years so oh, the yeah. demand was definitely high um, we had a hard time getting some of our forgings and our materials to even be able to do anything with the AM10 line. So now that things are semi-leveling back out, we decided to make a few changes to our AR-10 line. Um, we've done some different stuff with the flared magazine well. Uh, we changed our, our high pattern here. It's a DPMS high standard. Um, and, you know, we're really looking forward to building off this platform you know we can do a lot with the ar-15 and we can do the same thing with the ar-10 so as the rifles you see behind us they're coming you know out of the box built ready to go but we're also going to do what anderson does and offer the strip lowers stripped uppers parts everything if guys and gals are wanting to build their own so um, looking forward to it excited to see where it goes good deal so what's the difference in these three you have here so we've got the 16 inch here 18 inch and 20 inch we're also going to be coming out with a 12 and a half inch and a 24 inch so we've got a lot of stuff in the works with that again complete rifles builds everything so, so personal preference I'm personal free. preference yep. me personally yep. i like the the middle of the run here you know it's the 18 inch so it, it's it's a little versatile and uh you know i can use it for multiple multiple things so. makes sense for sure is there anything else you want to show us while we're here 
308's the big deal right now. You know, right, we're going right. to be coming with some different calibers too on this AR-10 platform. So 6.5 Creedmoor and some different things. So, awesome. um, you know, we've got some other stuff in the works on the AR-15 platform and potentially some other uh, some other platforms. So stay yeah. tuned. I'm pretty excited. Well, thank you so much. Yep, thank I appreciate you. it. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. We're over here now with KGM Technologies, and as you guys can imagine, this caught my eye. I'm talking about you, of course. Yes, no, uh, Thank <laughs> Chris, thanks yeah, for taking the time, yeah, thanks, man. Buddy. Absolutely, dude. Now, what the heck is going on here? I, I mean, I have an idea of what's going on, but yeah. this is freaking cool. Tell tell our viewers what, what it is. Yeah, so it's uh, our attention grabber, yeah. to be honest. Uh, but no, this is a uh, Browning M2, the Maldu. So it's a weapon system that's been around for 89 years now, and we're a little late to help it out. Uh, the military was seeing a lot of traumatic brain injuries and troops just being around and firing it. Uh, the air pressures coming off of this are pretty insane. So we, uh, we figured we could take some of our small arm tech, we could scale it up no problem and come up with some solutions. So we actually achieved some really cool stuff with this. Most people here walk around NRA, so you're not sneaking up on anybody with that. That's stupid. Yeah, it's not the point. Yeah, so that's definitely not the point. So a few things we've done is, like I said, we cut that air pressure down. So I think typically we were seeing uh, people were getting hit with above eight PSI air pressure, and we scaled that down. The safe level, I think they say, is four, so we got it below one. Yeah. So the wow. pressures overall has been one thing, and it's not scrambling people's brains and just concussing them nonstop with the yeah. fire. Uh, the sound also is cut down, obviously. This is a suppressor. So you're looking at about the sound level of a suppressed 5.56 rifle with this. Uh, really? It is, in fact, hearing safe. We got video of guys with no ear pro on, something I'm not going to make a day of, but yeah, right. you can do it and you can fire full auto. That's um, wild. Man. So, yeah, it's yeah. hearing safe. It's uh, cutting down that pressure coming off of it. Uh, we got rid of the flame, so you're not going to uh, be lighting up any ground forces right. if you got this above. Uh, you're not giving away positions. Yeah. Obviously, we're talking military, not you in the backyard. Yeah, right. Well, um, could be me in the backyard. <laughs> hey, we can all dream. Um, yeah, another thing is the recoil on this. We have what we call our Apex system, and we scaled it up into this, and it really cuts recoil down. So instead of it, you know, say 500 yards, you hitting a beaten area of five meters, you're scaling that down to like two feet. So we had this down at the tank range of Benning, and hitting a door nonstop was not a problem. So we've really been able to uh, take our tech, scale it up, make something that's really practical for the yeah. military and it's helping a lot of people out yeah. and uh, plus side of that is we figured stuff out along the way of fine-tuning this to scale back down onto our small arm stuff yeah. and really just evolve our both product lines at the same time so no, it's been a cool cool no, uh, project for us no that's fantastic and and also too I mean it's just like I was talking with Barrett about their QDL silencer and, and they said uh, you know hey it's not designed to be, you know, a hearing safe type of thing. This obviously is, it's just yeah. super cool. Uh, but it's ultimately designed, You a lot of these times you're shooting from a concealed position or, or you're shooting like in a house. Yeah. And just being able to knock down that concussive force a little bit, knock down that Absolutely. sound just a little bit is going to save a lot of ears, save a lot of brain, yeah. right? So it's that's pretty neat. Now. Now this is really cool and all, and uh, one thing I think uh, should be noted is that as cool as this is, I think a lot of our end users are going to want something a little bit more practical, and that's what you got over there. Yeah, we have something uh, a little more practical for the everyday person and a little more affordable. Yeah. Uh, a little lighter, too. Yeah, so check those out. Yeah, we got a few things. So now we've got a whole list of silencers here. Just start breaking it down, start talking about a little bit of that technology. Yeah, for sure. So like I mentioned before, a lot of our tech here, we scaled up and we got some ideas there and scaled it back down. <laughs> right. So we got everything from 22 up to 50 cal, obviously. Yeah. We uh, we got a 338 right here. We also do make, you know, more of a precision rifle 50 cal. We just didn't bring it with us, but it's a, it's a larger version of that. Yeah. Um, so across the board with our suppressors, um, a lot of what we do is kind of born out of the PRS world. We got a lot of guys that shoot those competitions. Uh, we've got some LE, ex-military, and a lot of hunters with us. So accuracy was a huge thing for our suppressors that right. we look at things a little differently than a lot of the stuff that's out there so we've only been around a few years with our KGM name but we've been in business for quite a while and we make a lot of suppressors for a lot of other people so we actually produce more suppressors than anybody else in the Western Hemisphere uh, a lot of its OEM stuff we do co-brands of people and obviously we do our own brand so we know what the mousetrap is we're trying to build a better one so going into the accuracy aspect you know, not only we do know we know what we're doing, we've got the engineers, we have a lot of the machining capabilities, but we need to get our tech expressed the right way and get our tolerances in. So we have a, a few things going on. One, it's a full titanium build with our precision rifle cans. Um, we're able to keep things very lightweight. 
Um, like I said, it's designed in a way to where if you're in competition, we are we're refusing to you know compromise a host weapon system's functionality or their accuracy. So we either want to maintain it or improve it, right. and uh, that's what we really work to do. One of the things that happens right off the bat in our suppressors is you can't really see our baffles too well, but we have different pathing options. So high pressure gases are going to flow more along the outside and the exit through what we call our apex system, yeah. and that's these holes along the front. So some people look at it and think we just drilled a few holes in there. Yeah. It actually has its own routing system to get oh, there. Cool. So high pressure gases are hitting that and they're going out. Low pressure gases are going through the core and forward. So we're mitigating a lot of the forward thrust. So then recoil is cut down in huge ways. Interesting. So with a bolt action rifle, we're seeing pretty much around 40% recoil reduction across the board. Uh, if it's a gas gun, 25, 35%. I mean, it all kind of varies. We've seen uh, one west weapon system with actually this small R30K suppressor of ours that brought it down 63% recoil reduction. I don't really know how that happened, but it did. <laughs> but, but it did. So it was yeah. cool to see. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're not going to tell everybody you'll get 63% recoil reduction, but you will right. get quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm amazed too by the weight. It's yeah, so light, man. All the precision rifle cans is a blend of grade 5 and grade 9 titanium. Um, we Cerakote everything in house. We do have heavier ones, so all this is precision rifle. Um, you know, it's great for hunting, it's great for lightweight. Uh, you know, this is actually something we did. Uh, it's a Department of Justice contract that we just won. So, uh, the 308 Bolt team that they got, they wanted our, our flagship 30 uh, cow can, it's our R30, but they wanted a different mounting system, so we came up with our kind of a you know, a brake you can direct the right on. It's taper mount, holds it right on there. All you do is squeeze it down, and as our guys like to say, you give it a little bit of man, yeah. and you're set. You're it's set. not too scientific, but it works. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're seeing stuff in LE, uh, mill, uh, obviously, like I said, competition, hunting. So it's been great for that aspect, but some people do want the hard use, full auto rated. Yes. And we got a few things on the way there and out. So this is our R556, which is a dedicated 556 hand. You can feel the weight's a little heavier on this one. It's not bad then. No, it's not bad. It's um, our in-house nitride treated um, stainless steel. Initially, we were building things with Inconel, similar to our large 50, but we found on this that we could uh, nitride things in the house in a way to uh, get better results with certain steels. Yeah. So that's what we've done here. Um, that includes one of our, our brakes. It's a taper mount, but then it also has a ratcheting system. Yeah. Kind of gives it oh, yeah. that extra little lock. We just got a poly you depress, Easy. and you're good to go. Easy enough. So uh, solid, solid stuff, man. So like I said, obviously the 50 cal caught my eye, and yeah, but there. then you've got this lineup here, and I was actually going to ask. I was like, are the holes just for looks? No, they do serve a purpose. Yeah, there's a lot and, of yeah. there. Yeah. Um, like you know, we just talked about the recoil there, yep. um, and we kind of look at suppressors at not just sound suppression. We've kind of developed and title we like to call the five pillars of suppression. So okay. we've thrown it up on our banners, and we look at accuracy, flash, gas, recoil, and sound. So we've already talked about accuracy and recoil. The other ones are flash, gas, and then sound. Is pretty obvious. Yeah. Cans have been around for a while and people have figured out how to flush sound down and if you got a can and it's around the same size of another, you're always going to be in the same ballpark of how much you're suppressing that sound. So right. why not do everything else that you can? Yeah. That's what we look at. So like I said, we cut down that accuracy or we we maintain your accuracy, we improve it, we cut down the recoil. But the Apex system also is uh, tunable. So you might see they're threaded holes right here. Yes. And we include a set of set screws with all of our stuff. So it can be done in different ways. If you are more concerned about, I want to suppress every last decibel of this, yeah. plug up all your holes and you're good to go. If you want the maximum recoil reduction, leave them open yeah. and you're, you're you're mitigating all that forward thrust for that. Um, on some scenarios with guys, they're doing an overwatch type of a thing. Yeah. They will plug all the top holes and they direct their energy down into the tripod instead of into the shooter. Right. You got much steadier uh, yeah. you know vision that way. Uh, you know, if you're worried about ground disturbance, depending on your environment where you're at, and that's something you need to worry about, you can plug up the bottom ones. Yeah. Uh, on the precision side of things, if you know that your build happens to always be a little bit up left, yeah. you can plug holes in a certain way to mitigate that. That's so it's, it's all tunable. Um, every bit of it's definitely a function, and we're trying to kind of cross all yeah, that. So you pretty much designed yeah. like a uh, compensated silencer, almost. Have, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, very cool stuff. Chris, thanks for taking the yeah, time, thanks, man. man. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Guys, check out KGM. Really interesting stuff. Yep. That's awesome. All right, we are over here with Thomas at Ryland Arms. So Thomas has got some pretty cool products here, and he's just going to explain those to us. So what do we got at the top here? Yeah, first thing we have is our new uh, FG9 9mm carbine. It's based off of the German FG42 from World War II. Nice. What we did is we scaled it down to fit the 9mm 
and work with the uh, Colt SMG 9mm magazines. That's cool. uh, in, any of the caliber or any of the uh, sizes that they have from awesome. 10 all the way to 30 rounds. Nice. Yeah, and it's a standard blowback. And what we did is we made it so it's the side feeder like the original, mm -hmm. and then the brass ejects out the bottom. Awesome. Of the rifle, yeah, yeah, and uh, so it's a lot easier to collect at the range, et cetera, like that, and you're not going to hit anybody. Right. Uh, a lot of it has a lot of safety features that That's way. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we have two different types. We have the long barrel right here, which is seven, uh, 16 and a half inches to the flash hider. Okay. And then it's designed where that can be removed, and people who have suppressors nice. can use those. Okay, awesome. Uh, then we have the second one right here, and this is 16 inches to the end of the barrel, our short barrel version. Okay. Uh, but that is not a removable flash hider. Right. Uh, and then the front rail right here, it's designed to work with uh, M-lock bipods. Okay and um, scope rails will fit there as well as your swivel hard points etc like that so awesome so what is your favorite part about this gun uh i i'm a history buff yeah so i just like the overall i've always been fascinated with the overall um, concept of the fg42 and uh and what I really like is just just the detail to the wood. Right. Yeah. Um, no, it's beautiful. Yeah, they've got wood everywhere. We uh, we make this out of out of cherry, mm -hmm. and we've got all the detail in. We try to duplicate as much detail as we could, uh, and keep the price within reason. Yeah. I, no, I love it. It's great. On that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is all cherry wood underneath the um, the black dye. Oh, okay. And. It's, uh, it's really interesting is it doesn't look very comfortable until you until you put it up, but you, uh, your cheek fits right in there perfectly. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's uh -huh. actually quite comfortable. So That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to show us this. I definitely look forward to seeing, seeing what you guys do in the future. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Now we're over here with Geisley Automatics. We got Kevin with us. Thanks for taking the time and speaking with us, man. And I got to say, I am a fan of y'all's products. Run probably a Geisley trigger in almost all my stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, we've given away the Super Duty. I think it was a 40 millimeter green that we've given away. Awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, what you're holding in your hands right now is something a little bit newer, though, right? Yeah, this is uh, one of our new GFR rifles. This is our rifle that's built from the ground up for the new Hornady cartridge, the 6 millimeter arc. Nice. Um, so pretty much we make everything for this rifle in-house. This is our flash hider. This is our 6 millimeter arc barrel. This is our 18-inch barrel uh, made from in 416R stainless steel. Uh, we cut rifle it in-house. Um, there's a lot of magic that goes on inside the gun that you can't really see. Uh, we use a longer barrel extension with a steel barrel nut uh, to give a more surface area, uh, more rigidity uh, for longer range accuracy for the six arc, arc cartridge. Right. Um, inside, we have a forged bolt that uh, is designed for our six millimeter arc cartridge uh, for added strength. Um, another thing that we have, you can't really see, you have to get close up. We have a stainless steel cam race that goes the full length of the, the cam pin on the bolt carrier when it reciprocates. Right. So you get steel and steel contact instead of steel and aluminum when you have the receiver from the cam pin. That's what these rivet holes are for on the upper receiver. Oh, wow. Um, another thing we did was we pushed forward the forward assist. Um, we found out that it's a little bit easier with the forward assist out of the way to be able to charge your rifle because we anticipate most shooters who have this, this, this weapon are going to be running an optic. Yeah. So you can get a little bit more finger clearance uh, with the forward assist out of the way. Um, another, another change that you guys will, will obviously notice is uh, this is our stock. We don't have a name for it yet, um, but this is our design. Uh, one of the cool features of our stock is it has a shrouded trigger as a actuator. Um, so if you're shooting on a bench or in prone, you have a rear bag. A lot of stocks, the rear bag can actually engage the, the catch and you can slide the stock on a recoil. This, this trigger mechanism is fully shrouded, so you don't have to worry about that happening. We also have four QD cuts, two on each side, front and rear. So you can have a very versatile you know, sling uh, placement wherever you want to mount it. Um, this is our new pistol grip. Um, similar to our standard pistol grip on our Super Duty rifles, uh, however, you'll notice 
This guy is uh, at a 17 degree angle instead of a 22 degree angle like our standard grips. Um, so it's not as a not as aggressively curved like a, your A2 yeah. pistol grip. Also, we uh, we uh, eliminated the little finger nub that our Super Duty grips have. Um, this guy is not out yet. Um, it will be out hopefully around July, and this guy will uh, retail for about 3,500 bucks. Nice, man. So, I mean, you guys put pretty much all your thought into it when it comes to precision shooting, all the way down to the accessories and, you know, like you said, even the, the uh, barrel extension. So, really nice product, and uh, I'm excited to try it. I, I do want to shoot it. I've I got my hands on a 6 millimeter arc for the first time at shot, and we're shooting out 1,000 yards. Easy, you know, awesome cartridge. And uh, now on top of that, we've got a couple of other items here that I know you guys will definitely be uh, familiar with with, but let's just go ahead and uh, talk about those really quick if you're cool with that. Absolutely. So we have these two are our Super D rifles, uh, both chambered in 5.56. Uh, this guy right here is our 14 and a half inch Super Duty with our pin and welded flash hider. This is a short fire flash hider. Um, the barrel itself is made in house. It's cold hammer forge, chrome line. That's our gas block. This is our Mark 16 rail. Uh, this is one of our 1 to 6 optics. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with our optics. Uh, 26 millimeter objective, 1 to 6, illuminated reticle, second focal plane. Uh, we offer it in DDC and black. Um, this is our scope mount. Uh, our bolt carrier group made in house. Um, our machine upper and lower receiver. This right here is our SSAEX trigger. Um, this has our nano weapon coating on it. Um, we also have the SSAX trigger. This guy is gonna be right about three and a half pounds total pull weight. The SSAX trigger is about four and a half pounds. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm sure you guys are familiar with our Super Duty line. Uh, this guy right here is one of our pistols. This is our 11.5 barrel. Once again, cold hammer forged, Mark 16. These are our flip up sights on front and rear. We make these in house as well. Uh, this is our MRO mount. Um, same thing like the like the, the bigger 14 and a half inch gun. Receiver is the same, just obviously it's anodized in black, not, not DDC. Uh, and it has the SBA3 uh, arm brace on it. So and this guy actually is running the SSAX trigger, the four and a half pound trigger. So. Man, well, they're solid guns. I've got a, a lot of experience with the Super Duty, and it always runs flawlessly for me, and just good quality work, as Geisley always does. So, hey, thanks for taking the time, Kevin. Excellent work today. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying the show, too. I am. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for stopping by, guys. You got it, man. We are over here at Delton with Megan. Megan, what are you holding? So this is our Echo 316. Um, it comes with a 4150 barrel steel. It's a heavy barrel, so it is Maryland compliant. Awesome. It comes with our 10 inch M lock. We have the upper and lower receiver, which is 7075 T6 aluminum. Mm -hmm. And then our bolts are Carpenter 158. Um, all of our guns do come with lifetime warranty on them as well. Awesome, awesome. And uh, here you guys have some pretty cool things in the works. Yes, so we are going to be releasing soon a 300 blackout pistol, which will be a 10 and a half inch barrel with a 9 inch M-Lock handguard or rail on it. Awesome, awesome. So what's your favorite thing about your products? Um, the customer service. Uh, we are a really small knit um, company and we stand behind our product. Uh, we offer lifetime warranty, so anytime anybody has an issue, we always make it right. Gotcha. That's awesome. So is there anything else you want to show me while we're here? Um, we do. Don't forget to check out. We, we still do barrel assemblies. Okay. Um, we still do rifle kits. Um, we still do A2 buttstocks, 20-inch barrels, which okay. a lot of people in the industry don't do that anymore. Right. Um, so that is something that we offer as well. Awesome. Well... I love them. I know our customers love them. So guys, check out Delton. Thank Classic you. Packs. We're over here now with Leupold Optics. We got Sean with us. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely, man. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, first of all, love y'all's products. And uh, secondly, when I saw this little guy announced, I was like, no way. That is uh, Micro. The Delta Point Micro. It's one of our performance red dots. Yeah. Uh, we released it a couple years ago. It's really gaining some traction now. It's, it's, it's a very different look and feel. I know what you're talking about when you're, you're kind of you're saying you, you've seen it. You know, yeah. it's it's something different here. So what it's designed to do is replace the rear sight on either a non-MOS Glock or anything, just about anything in the Smith & Wesson M&P line. Only the core pistols, it, it's not really compatible with. So, but if you got a Glock, you got a Smith & Wesson M&P. There are millions of them out there. You just replace the rear sights. You slide the Delta Point Micro right in there. You don't need any gunsmithing. You can do it yourself. And what you're looking at is the most compact, concealable red dot on the market right now. 
easy to conceal. Uh, you know, it's low profile. It's got an enclosed uh, emitter. So what that means is dirt, dust, belly button lint, any of that stuff, it's not going to block your dot, right? You're going to be able to see that dot no matter what. And it's designed to co-witness with your front sight. So as you as you shoot it here at the targets behind us, what you're going to see is you can still see your front sight. So if, you're, if you've been shooting irons on your personal defense pistol, it's going to be a very easy transition. Whereas the Delta Point Pro, you kind of have to retrain your eye and retrain your grip. With the Micro, you go right into how you've been shooting your pistol all along. Yeah. Fantastic little unit. It is on the shelf for under four hundred dollars. Yeah. Battery is right here. You do not have to remove the sight to change the battery. That's something a lot of people are very passionate about. They don't have to re-zero. Re yeah. So you take, you got to replace the battery. Pop that off. Battery in. You're good to go. Yeah. And we're looking at something here. Battery life on this is going to be on medium settings years. Yeah. Right. Years. Yeah. So you're not you're not even going to have to worry about it. Dude, that's that's awesome, man. And I have already been playing the game a little bit. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And. It was surprising because I was thinking with it being such a smaller viewing glass mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have as much of a field of view. I wouldn't be able to pick it up as easily. And it actually came super natural. Yep. I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, and it is a little bit of a transition. I may, I may have a little bit of an advantage because I shoot with red dots all the time. But at the same time, it was like, I don't know, small glass, let's see how it works. And it was like, oh, that picked up naturally. That picked up easily. Yeah, if, so if, very if, cool. If you've been shooting with your sights, the, the Delta Point Micro, it's, it's going to be a very natural transition. Yeah. You know, the, one of the reasons we're doing this activation here at the NRA annual meetings is because folks see the photos of this, you know, they see it on the internet, and it's hard to really get a feel for what it's going to be, right? Right. So we want folks to come down here, we want them to shoot it at the targets we've got here, and I mean, honestly, everyone that does walks over to the uh, walks over to the counter and starts asking about it. Like, yeah, it, right. you've just got to, you've got to see it to believe it. It's a fantastic little product. Yeah. Well, awesome, man. Well, thanks for taking the time talking about that guy. And uh, for those that like a more of a traditional red dot, mm -hmm. mind just talking about the Delta Point Pro for a little bit? Oh, absolutely. The Delta Point Pro, I mean, you're looking at the fastest, absolute top performing performance red dot on the market. Uh, you know, there, there's not a red dot out there that'll allow you to be faster. It's got that big, you know, real large window, you know, very clear, doesn't have the bluing around the edges that some red dots will run into. Excellent product. Like I said, the, the difference is it's just, it's, it's larger. You know, a lot of guys run in competitions. Some people do still carry, you know, can still carry with them. Uh, one of my one of my coworkers has been running the activation this weekend. That's what he does. Yeah. Just a fantastic product, borderline indestructible. You know, we, we test these things to absolutely crazy standards with our Punisher. Mm -hmm. You can't beat it. You know, if you, if you if you want the Cadillac, this is your red dot. If yeah. you're looking for something a little more concealable, you're going to go to the Delta Point Micro. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And yes, I do have experience with the Delta Point Pro, and it is a fantastic little red dot. So, excellent stuff. Man, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Guys, we are over here with Cobalt Kinetics. We have Aaron and Gabe with us. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day. Uh, so I actually heard you guys have some pretty cool things that you're doing that is not typical, you know, AR stuff. So can you just explain that a little bit to me? Yeah, do you want to start? Sure. You start? <laughs> sure. Well, welcome, folks, to Cobalt Kinetics 2.0. Uh, if you're familiar with our brand, uh, you've seen that we've gone through a rebranding through out the last, uh, I guess, year and a half. If you're familiar with the previous brand that was launched around 2014, 2015, uh, we catered more towards the three gun competition style, you know, uh, platforms. Uh, very unique looks to the gun, you know, the, the performance factor was geared towards being a, a race gun. Uh, after this fighting gentleman here, Mr. Aaron Quinn, bought the company in 2020, the concept was to start shifting the focus into more of a bespoke, practical platform, right? right? And uh, there's a lot that we've learned, there's a lot of lessons that we carried over from the previous brand, there's a lot of additions. Uh, that have been done to the the new model, which we have two families, the Pro Series and the SPR, which we'll go into. Um, you're here at a very special moment for us because as of this show, I believe we're pretty confident that we've added the, the, the final piece to the puzzle. A lot of this was, uh, oh, let's try this, no, we're gonna try something else, you know? So with the addition of a few parts that we're launching here at the show, you're looking at the full version of the new brand awesome. and there's some some really cool features to the new design that he, he'll run you through right now all right yeah, so this is our uh, upper receiver group mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people look at it and they say you know this looks semi monolithic or they think it's a monolithic upper right. um, it it would be actually more appropriate to say semi monolithic mm -hmm. so when we remove the hand guard here um, what you notice is okay thank you <laughs> It looks very different. So, traditional mil spec upper receiver group has, you know, threads that come out about a half inch and they're exposed. Um, 
one thing that in in the design that we, we were going after was how can we strengthen an area that has a lot of action a lot of things taking place you, you know more and more people are putting lasers and you know optics and big suppressors lots of things on the on the end of the gun right. and so you have a lot of weight there and so how can we take this what inherently is could be perceived as a, a as a weaker point right. and strengthen it and add a little bit more value one thing that i i didn't like about traditional systems is the handguard is slave to the barrel mm -hmm. so you you attach a handguard to the same exact thing that you attach uh, your barrel and so whatever happens to one happens to the other in extending out our upper itself inverting the threads it allowed us to have a flat shelf milled out on the bottom so every time a barrel goes in it sits on a milled surface mm -hmm. um, and if you if you if you take apart a rifle and look into it you're not even going to see coating or anything on, on that side because we wanted the integrity of that piece to remain consistent throughout and then as uh, as we have a jam nut that holds our barrel in, so the barrel goes down, jam nut goes on, and th this is a little bit inconvenient, but we figured the 30 seconds it takes to screw this in. <laughs> Cue the sponge bomb yeah. two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it makes it worth it, right? It does, like the value that you get in the performance that comes out of it is, is worth those extra turns. This, uh, the jam nut is actually made from 7075 aluminum, the same material as the upper, and we did that because, again, Traditionally, you're going to see steels used on it, and steel versus aluminum, they're going to expand, they're going to contract, they're going to, they're going to move and have different characteristics that compete against each other. Right. And that breakdown over time, and especially under under fire, under movement, under barricading, all kinds of things that are going on, um, I, we didn't like that inconsistency in there. So that that is why this is the 7075 aluminum. Um, there was a handguard around in your hand. <laughs> um, when the handguard goes on, slides over, you'll notice there's a timing piece right here, so it won't go back right. until it hits the right spot. And then you've got eight screws around, uh, four sets of two. These, the threads actually are, are not straight into it. So when you, when you screw these in, what ends up happening is it, it sucks the handguard back in. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that's where you get that, that smooth transition, that, that the monolithic-ish look. Right. But it was, it was more so that we knew exactly where things should line up so that it's zeroed every time. And if you look down, down the Picatinny, you're not gonna see any, any, any deviations in there. Right. Um, and so you can have confidence mounting stuff up here, uh, cross mounting optics. You're not gonna have a zero shift because it is milled together. And yeah. then when we bring them in, upper handguard, lower is matched. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of put it together a little bit up front before right. it goes into coating, before it goes into anything. And then we hand blend everything just so that the end user can have something that, like it looks good at first. Great. And then, yeah. And then you, you can destroy it. Yeah, it's like super smooth. Piece. It does look like one piece, yeah. Like when you asked me, I was like, wait, is there a break there? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it is. I mean, it's super smooth. And, th and that's where you start seeing the um, the part that I mentioned bespoke. You yeah. know, it, it's a one gun, one gunsmith approach on right. top of all the material selection, mm -hmm. the process that we go to uh, go through to vet all of the aftermarket parts that, that are placed into the gun. The one that carries it over the finish line is the gunsmith, you right. know, so it's not an assembly line process where it goes from one person to the other. Mm -hmm. It's one person that's held accountable, professionally trained, to make sure that the end result that comes out the other side is a, a, a platform that will never quit, a legacy product that you can hand down to your, your son, daughter, whomever, and also backed by a lifetime warranty. And if, if that person that you gifted to later on needs something from us or has questions or whatever, yeah we will always have that door open. That's so awesome. there's there's a a lifetime partnership that, that we are trying to create with our, our potential consumers. And we looked at every single like every single piece and component of of the AR platform mm -hmm. when we did this, like springs, detents, like every single piece and, and said how can we like what what frustrates us and what what can we do a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So even even down to like the the uh, the dust cover port door rod that goes in here you'll notice there's no c-clip that that holds that in place right. what ends it actually goes i don't know if you can see there but it goes in oh, here yeah. and then is held in place with a set screw that set screw 
is, is sitting on a shelf, so it's not going to go down. And then when you put your hand guard on, it, it covers it completely. So you, you've got a trapped in set screw that is preventing that. You're not going to lose your, your dust cover to some half cent C clip that, that, that could be out there. Right. Um, we don't use roll pins. We, we feel like they're inherently weak. Also, if you want a hose nozzle, <laughs> step across the, the hallway there. Um, we don't use roll pins because of the, the inherent weakness, but so like where the Ford Assist goes in, where uh, the bolt catch goes in, we use long neck screws that um, are, it's easier to get in and out, but also you're able to lock tight that and secure it uh, completely. Right. Um, gas block up front, where traditionally you only have one choice because of what it is, we actually use a full coil pin, oh, awesome. uh, or a coil spring, coil pin, however however you want to you want to refer to that. Um, but it's got 360 degrees of, of strength instead of just a very limited portion on that. And I mean, do you want to talk about the, the buffer release? Yes. So what? Oh, I was going to hold one. Oh, hand. Okay. I was going to let you have your hands. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, so the. The repetitive theme that you're seeing here are elegant solutions. We're solving micro issues along the way, issues that were always present, not just in our platform, but in all of the AR platforms out there. Some companies are not aware of the problem, some have decided not to look under that rock. We had to rebuild and redesign anyway. So that, that's what you're seeing. That's why there's so much attention to detail to those little things. Uh, on top of that, I mentioned, uh, you know, our, our our products are stacked with close to eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars worth of sought-after aftermarket, you know, <laughs> products. There are some that have met our specifications and our criteria, and we have a really good working relationship with those brands. Where we also hold them to that promise. If not, we send the product right back. So, can you tell me which one of these you're talking about? So, <laughs> minus the scope mm -hmm. and the mount that you see there. Yeah. The trigger. Geisley, okay. uh, the buffer tube, uh, and, and the buffer system, which we're going to get into now a little bit more specifically from Voltor, B5 furniture, uh, B5 end plate, Ford controls design, castle nut, triple stake, by the way, just shows the attention to detail that mm -hmm. we go to, the charging handle from Radian, barrels are either from uh, Proof Research, as you see there, or, or Roscoe Manufacturing, uh, list goes on and on, Ambi ambi controls and then the parts that we decided to make on our own because hey we can control these tolerances starts with the gas block a very tight seal on the barrel mm -hmm. it, it prevents that blow by that you see on some guns that are just oh, yeah. assembled in an assembly line that's yep. not taken into account the bolt and carrier group that is to our specs our design okay. um, the safety that is to our specs our design we make yep awesome. the uh the muzzle device towards the front, it's a new series, a new family called the RCB, okay. the Reduced Concussive Brake. This one happens to be in partnership with Dead Air, and you're going to see a lot of partnerships. So we partnered up with Dead Air to get the, the correct specs for that design, and you will also see models come out that host uh, OSS slash Huxworks suppressors mm -hmm. and, uh, and I believe the Silencer Co. ASR mount as well and then finally if you want to show another partnership that we did yeah this is the big launch of the show yeah so this one it, it's been well over a year now that we've been uh, we've been working with them uh, the Voltor a5 system most people are familiar with it if you're not um, it's a buffer that carries four weights inside uh, it's three quarters of an inch longer and is known worldwide for for reliability um, there's it's got a, a little captured spring inside that directionally helps on on that re-engagement of the the carrier group uh, back into battery um, and in in working with them we're like how can we license something how can we use the platform and put our twist on it what like what what but what also keep it simple and recognizable for people so um, our, our previous buffer system is, is extremely complicated, but what we did like about it and what we took from it was this little feature on the top that um, is a anti-tilt and a uh, preload feature is, is what we like to, to refer to it as. So when, when it's in and the, the BCG engages with 
the buffer you can see it, it kind of has that it, it fits oh yeah but and as I as you can see here kind of if I can turn it like this mm -hmm. inside it it doesn't do that but what it does is it's got that little bit of space there that allows a little just a micro preload on the spring mm -hmm. and so you don't get as much of an impact on it and you don't get that flat and flat like like traditional stuff mm -hmm. where you can that's felt and so on disengaging of the lugs on the shot it feels like a like a softer pushback in total gotcha. and, and even as i'm holding this this stripped gun right now just by placing it up against the the buffer itself you already feel that there's significant engagement versus a flat versus flat surface right, yeah you know so that that it's giving it a controlled path the whole way um another thing that it does very well you know and it, you talk about the preload functions and everything else um, it also cuts down on cavitation mm -hmm. within the tube as the carrier is going in like that mm -hmm. not to be mistaken with what some people think uh, okay. only happens with go ahead <laughs> not to be mistaken to uh, to a problem that's unique uh, to uh, gas piston ARs, which is carrier tilt. Right. That's when the operating rod hits the top where the gas key normally would be, and it drags along the bottom, destroying the buffer tube, things like that. But right. there is still a level of cavitation or vibration, whatever you want right. to call it, that happens in a direct impingement system like this one. That's also a form of recoil, mm -hmm. you know, turbulence. Yeah. So we're cutting that at its core helping smooth out the entire system. Gotcha. You so wanna, what, go ahead. I was going to say, that's what, I mean. that's what we refer to when we talk about the anti-tilt feature. Yeah, yeah. So basically what you're doing is you're cutting out the back and forth motion as much as you can, and so it's just going straight back and straight forward, so it helps with your your recoil in, in a certain way, as in it's it's just going straight back instead of all over the place. Yeah. We're not bouncing around as yeah, much. Yeah, we're not trying to get rid of recoil because right. it should happen. Exactly. What we're trying to do is Yes, you can lessen it by by having the appropriate mass behind the carrier, right. appropriate gas um, of, of of the entire system to barrel length, caliber, things like that. But outside of that, it's we just we care that it goes straight back and the return is straight forward, yeah, so exactly. that you have a consistent and predictable understanding when the round goes off what's going to happen. Gotcha. Um, to that end, we have um, you know. I said this is three quarters of an inch longer, requires a rifle length tube, or a rifle length spring, sorry. And that rifle length spring, there's really only one of them out there. Um, and if you're gonna be able to change weights, you're gonna be able to change barrel lengths, gas port sizes, different things like that, run it suppressed, unsuppressed, um, you should be able to change the whole system. And, and currently, you know, on the carbine spring side, there's a ton of options to go from, you know, from lighter, lighter tensions to stronger, um, and, and kind of everything in between. And so what we have is a cap here, and that cap or collar, it's more of a collar, not a cap, mm -hmm. but that cap is uh, something that, and this is a prototype, so it's a little bit snug. Um, as it goes on, what it does, it's got these flats on it, you can line it up, it press fits in, and it allows you to now use a, um, like a carbine spring mm -hmm. with the A5 system allows you to have the the correct spring to the correct weight also giving more surface area to the top here and so you're gonna have more surface contact with the buffer tube and that quiets the system down it, it just it's again it's going after that okay if we can make this efficient what else can we look past and the consequence of having more efficiency just by you know compounding it right yeah and it may not look like a huge deal if you've ever played around with the A5 system or you typically build your own ARs. These things will make you take notice like, oh, wow, you know, because you've come across some of these issues at some point. Right. That one little sleeve on the buffer is a pretty huge deal for that system, you know, because you were just held to having to do rough adjustments based off buffer weights alone. Mm -hmm. Now you can do these little, you know, fine adjustments to really tune in your system specifically. And what we do as well, seeing how we, we go through the entire platform, make sure that everything is picked uh, according to what caliber, barrel length, everything else, mm -hmm. the buffer weights and springs that we will pick is the same thing. So your gun is dialed in for, I think, the, the, one of the better options out there from the factory. So it, it's, it's all one, you know, entire little eco 
sphere of uh, <laughs> of an operation just to bring one product to market. So that's that's what everyone's been doing for the last, I guess, year, year and a half with the brand to really bring something new to the table, not just the same old stuff. No, I love it because what I see is what you did here is you you used a good quality AR, mm -hmm. and then you made all the modifications that anyone would make aftermarket yes. and put it coming right off the shelf. And, and some elegant solutions along the way, oh, fixing yeah. a lot of issues that others either, again, were not aware of or they just didn't want to address, right. you know, and, and it's a good thing that we did because now it's it's really a solid system and it's a shame that we're not here at a range because oh, yeah. I would love to see the look on your face. <laughs> Because oh, we'll make it happen. We'll uh, make it happen. We, we need to. We need to. Um, the, the the whole thing about it is the technical part is always the boring part. But you have to uh, let people know what's going on. That way they understand why this is working the way it is. Yeah. But the end result is always great. Yeah. Every time we go to a dealer and they shoot the platform after we've explained everything to them, they're like, Wow. Okay. Yeah, because you can just feel you can feel what you've heard. Yeah. It, it is noticeably noticeably different. It's the difference between having a dream build that you did yourself in your garage versus an actual hot rod professional hot rod shop right. that built yep. it from scratch. Yep. That's what you see here. That's worth awesome. a twenty-five minute snoozer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, thank you guys so much. Is there anything else you want to add before we hop off? Uh, well, you know, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and any other tech questions, or if you want to purchase one of these fine platforms, go to www.cobaltkinetics.com, and thank and, you. Yeah, hopefully we can get some over at Classic soon. <laughs> I'm hoping so. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Man, that's fun. But you know what's even more fun? shooting with a friend just like referring a friend at classicfarms.com for this current giveaway right katie yeah now you gonna let me shoot this yeah go for it <laughs> oh and guys uh the code word also gets you more entries so 2a now let's get back to the show. We're over here now with Sky. You guys absolutely love these pistols. They move really well for us. Jeff, thanks for taking the time to talk with us, man. Yeah, man, no problem. Yeah, and uh, we got a lineup of pistols here. What all we got? So uh, today we've got uh, a lot of options here. We have our CPX 1 and 2 Gen 3. Just recently released this for SHOT Show. We made a lot of awesome improvements to this gun. That's an already a very good gun. Uh, we've slimmed up the back strap got rid of finger grooves. That was uh, a big suggestion that we uh, listened to our customers about. We did away with a plastic trigger and uh, went with a uh, 7075 T6 aluminum machine trigger that we do all of our machining in-house. So everything you see here, we do right here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, we also went with a Picatinny rail mount on the front so you can add things like a flashlight or a laser, things of that nature. We also have G43 compatible uh, fixed sights, so if you have any kind of aftermarket sights from True Glow, Trigicon, things of that nature, yeah. that will be compatible here. We also have uh, a Red Dot Ready option, yep. so anything that will fit a shield footprint will fit here, so you can add your, your own Red Dots. Yeah. So that is our CPX Gen 3 model. Yeah. We also have our DVG, which is um, uh, our Striker Fire uh, 9 millimeter that we released last year. Um, so going away from the hammer fire double action only going to a striker fire so you're looking at a much more tactile trigger yeah. we went with a flat trigger to get that more tactile feel and you have a very short very nice low uh force on the trigger yeah. um i mean it looks good that's for sure i like i like the all black you know? it just looks looks clean but the, and that's, that's always that. been our thing is you know we have many different color options available yes. that you can see yeah. around so um you know, that's what it's all about. Yeah, man, you can accessorize to your style. Exactly, exactly. We also have our uh, our CPX 3 and 4, which we uh, is our 380 model. All of our guns are 10 plus 1. You get two magazines with every gun. We also have a lifetime warranty. The warranty follows the gun, not the owner. So doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if you buy it new or used, you still have that warranty. Give us a call and we'll help you out. 
That's that's awesome, man. Well, great. Hey, thanks for taking the time yeah, to speak with us, guys. It. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. Of course, man. And guys, check out Sky at ClassicFarms.com. We're over here now with Diamondback, and we've got Simon here talking with us. Thanks for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. And uh, we've got the DBX here. The DBX, I've I've shot it quite a bit, and it is just such a cool gun. So low recoiling. Can you just take a couple moments here and just tell us about it? So the DBX, when we came out with it in 2022, was uh, the idea behind it was to be the smallest and lightest, kind of the same uh, same concept as our DB9. We wanted to make sure that we had a rifle platform that was almost the same concept. So we've got about an inch wide and about 3.7 pounds with a brace on it. So the idea was to always to be the perfect ideal truck gun, you know. So we've got all your standard AR lower controls aside from this mag catch right here with a interchangeable ambidextrous reciprocating charging handle. So this, if you just want to swap it over, you can plug it, unplug and replug right away. Easy enough. Got yeah. your last round hold open. Um, the gun is uh, does come suppressor ready with a five position uh, adjustable gas block and half by 28 threads on an eight inch stainless steel barrel. No, that, that's awesome. And can you talk about the operating system really cool? Because that's something pretty unique that, that runs really well. So what we did on the operating system uh, is a dual piston driven uh, carbine. So you have a reciprocating, uh, obviously the gas system is reciprocating and your uh, bolt head rotates as it uh, travels backwards. So with the dual pistons, it sends it back and then, you know, same way as direct impingement. Yeah, right, which is, which is really neat. So check out the DVX guys, but you got one other item just sitting right over there we wanna go check out too, right? Yes, sir. Let's go look at it. Now, something I think that's pretty cool about you guys is you make some pretty innovative firearms like the DBX, and then if you want to kick it old school, you got some revolvers too, which I think is pretty cool. That's right. So we just actually have entered into the revolver world, uh, and when we were de developing this, we were thinking about all the stuff that you really struggled with when you were a kid. You know, like everybody had the 22 Plinkin revolver that was always fun to shoot, the old school single action cowboy. But yep. you know, what were the things that kind of it was fun, but it was like, man, this is kind of tedious. Well. You only got six rounds, right? Well, on, on, not on this bad boy. You get nine. Yeah. You know, you got it. And then unloading, you've got your old school ejection rod yeah. that's single act, that's single eject. Yeah. Not on this. On this one, you've got your quick release that's uh, dual purposed into your old school ejection rod. You push that forward, and that releases your cylinder on a swing out arm. Nice. Not to mention, you have your quick ejection of all nine rounds that you get with this bad boy. Yeah. And instead of just being single action where you would have to fan it, yeah. you get single double on this. So nice. That's fantastic, man. I mean, you still fan it if you want to, you know, right? Oh yeah, of course you still fan that's, it. That's still fun, right? Not to mention the fact that you can go from long rifle to magnum power pretty quickly with just the plunger of this right here. So you push this out, and any pen or any kind of tool could use a plunger to push that out and that, re that releases and then you can drop your magnum cylinder in really quick. Man, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome, man. Well, that's awesome, and, and what's the name of this revolver again? This is the deep, uh, the Diamondback Sidekick. Sidekick, that's awesome, man. So check out the Sidekick, guys, the DBX, a whole assortment of firearms, rifles, pistols, everything y'all got. Check them out, Diamondback Classic Firearms. Thanks, man. Thank you. Now we're over here with Lone Wolf, and we got Matt here with us today. Thank you, hey. man. Hey, Clint, how's it going? Doing well, sir, and we've got some LTD goodness over here. What can you tell me about this LTD 19, man? All right, so this is the LTD 19 V1 Black. We have two different versions. Basically, it just comes down to design aesthetics. It's really what you like. Yeah. So over here, we got the V1. They both have muzzle cuts. This one's a little bit less. This one's a little bit more with a fuller grind. But it really comes down to whatever's more aesthetically pleasing. Honestly, I mean, they're both going to be 16 grams lighter yeah. than our competition. They both come with 17-pound recoil springs. Yeah. But other than that, if you were more attracted to this one, that's V1. If you're more attracted to this one, that's V2. We have different color combinations. So we got black with the nitride, or we got satin finish with the gray frame, or we have a combination of both. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the super nuts of this whole thing. All right, so 16 grams lighter, what does that mean? Less reciprocating mass. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. The faster you can get the case out, the faster you can get it back in the battery, the faster you can recall point of impact. Yeah. First round out's important, second round out is just as important. So recalling your second shot, super duper important. Yeah. This one's gonna come with Angry Bear Arms, Suppressor Height Sights, and Trigicon RMR. We're actually raffling this one off today. Oh, nice. So if you come over here, you sign the QR code, take a picture of it, 
get signed up. We're raffling it off at 4 p.m. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Very cool. and if you want to, we can come around the back and show you what we have for the LTD 17s. Yeah, let's take a look. All right. And now you said we've got the LTD 17, right? Yeah. So this is going to be our full size, full size 17 round magazine. Uh, so really quickly, this one comes in at 21 ounces. Our LTD 19 comes in at 19 ounces. However, both are relative. They are both 16 grams lighter than the competition, both with 17 pound recoil springs. So again, same configuration. You're going to have the V2 nitride on the slide, set finish on the barrel, black frame, or if you like the gray juice, we got the gray. So you're going to have the gray frame, set finish on the slide, set finish on the barrel. Again, both of them 17 pound recoil springs. You're going to have a lot less reciprocating mass, even though it's a 17, it's going to cycle a hell of a lot faster than your Glocks. Nice. So <laughs> if this is what you like, we got it. We also redesigned the lower receiver for both, full size on the compact. What does that mean? So the human fist naturally points at 73 degrees. So what we did is we took that into account for a new design where Glock points at 68 degrees. People have been shooting Glocks for a long time. They tend to overcompensate. Subconsciously, they're auto-rotating. So they don't. it's kind of a hard sell on that one. But for a new shooter, somebody who's new into the industry, the learning curve is a lot less steep with this type of lower receiver because you're closer to a 1911 at 73 degrees. So at 71 degrees, you get a lot flatter point. So come on down, come see what we got. We got a lot of cool stuff to show. Again, we're raffling off that LTD19 V1 Armar Black. That's awesome, man. And these all look great. I've already, yeah. dude, I've already been playing with these quite a bit. And I will say the gripping on that just feels so ergonomic. And then we also reprofiled the lower receiver. Uh, so what we did is we took a lot of the plastic around the outside out of it. So the Glocks just typically have, they, they tend to be a little bit more bulkier, which is fine for, you know, their design. But what we wanted to do was get a smaller grip circumference while it's still making it structurally stable. Right. So you're going to get a, you're going to get a better grip. You're going to get a tighter grip. And if somebody with smaller hands that typically wouldn't like the uh, our competitor's platform, they would come over to us and they're like, oh, well, you know what, actually that feels tighter. You can actually get a higher purchase on there. And then you get, again, just better pointability, better grip, yeah. so. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And uh, so we're not done here yet, though, because on the, Back on the other side yeah, with the LTD 19. We're talk about the Eliminator, our yeah. Eliminator 45. It's our new suppressor line. Yeah, I saw yes. that. I was like, all right, let, let's go see that. Okay. Yeah. Now this. Oh yeah. Is what I'm talking about. Oh, First yeah. of all, it looks like a big old long boy, but it's not adding that much weight to the front Do you of the see gun. How light it is. Yeah, it is it's super light. Unbelievably light. light. Yeah. So this is actually rated all the way to 300 blackout. It's actually our Eliminator 45. So we can shoot up to 45 down the nine millimeter and everything in between. Don't shoot 5.56, five, you'll have a real bad day. High pressure rounds with aluminum doesn't go well. Right. But 300 blackout, you know, anything subsonic, you're, 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 you're ready to rock and roll. So as you can see, this is a fully modular suppressor. What does that mean? You're gonna be able to modulate that down all the way down to here. Of course, each baffle stack you take out, yeah. the louder it's gonna get. Right. But fully configured, uh, this bad boy is pretty quiet. This actually was a partnership design with Primary Weapon Systems in oh, nice. Boise, Idaho. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I know, uh, I know those guys, yeah, Brittany and yeah, Jane. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, no, so they're... I see Brittany over there making a face right now, actually. <laughs> 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 no, they, no, they're awesome people. Uh, they have some great engineers down there. So we designed this in conjunction with them. They gave us some uh, great tips because uh, they've been in the game for a long time. This is our first suppressor, so we wanted to get some points from them. Yeah. And uh, this is just, it, it turned out absolutely phenomenal with a really great ergonomic design. Also what we did, the blast baffle, is the only part that's serialized. Yeah. So if you get baffle strikes, start wearing out baffles, you get to knock these suckers off, you can buy new ones from us, and then you don't have to serialize new baffle stacks. So that's good. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I'm, so that is, that's actually a pretty cool design. Yeah. Because like you said, if something happens to the can a little bit down, down there, yep. uh, you're able to replace that instead of having to do a whole new NFA transfer or whatever. That, exactly, or, you know, exactly. Yeah. And then we also manufacture our own pistons and piston interfaces. Everything is standard, uh, half 28 and 9 16 24. Yeah. So, um, and if you want to do, like, put this on a PCC, uh, Rugged makes a great three lug adapter. So you bolt that sucker right on there and then you have a uh, fixed mount. So, yeah, no problems, no problems with uh, modularity. 
yeah. across platforms. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, first of all, it looks great. I'm surprised at how light it is and all the modularity capability, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Matt, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for your time. Yeah, absolutely. We're over here now with Mira Safety. These guys probably make some of the best gas masks, gas masks that are commercially available on the market. I love, I've got the CM6, CM7. I'm excited for this guy when it's ready. Yeah, That's right. But Eric, thanks for taking the time, man. Of course, man. And uh, you guys are doing all sorts of stuff now. You're in the body armor gang. Uh, you do uh, fil filters, of course. And you do all sorts of stuff, too, for uh, children as well. Yes, we do. Yeah, man. But uh, anyway, let's talk about these and uh, just what you guys are into. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so obviously, mirror safety. We specialize on professional grade, gas mask, hazmat suits, filters, all things that protect you and your family against chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear threats, also known as burn or CBRN. Right. And yeah, right now, our main, like, top of the line stuff that we're known for is, of course, our full face respirators, right? So the CM6 I'm here talking about is a great general purpose product, talking about things that, hey, you know, uh, I could be in a toxic environment. I wanted to have full field of view with a panoramic visor. The 7M is more for your combat applications role. So if I want to run uh, long gun platforms like an AR, an AK, still get a good cheek weld that has clearance for that as well. Yep. And the recessed visor gives you clearance for using knots as yes. well. So people love running that, right? And they're all cut for helmets, obviously, like Team Wendy's, hardhead veterans, ops core helmets, things like that too. Yep. But yeah, I mean, we have got a whole slew of options. We have things for children, as I said earlier, the uh, MD1 mask. We have another one called the CM3M, which is like basically like an escape hood design for children. Yeah. It uses a PAPR system, gives them positive air pressure environment. Yeah. We have uh, hazmat suits as well, uh, seaburn rated boots and gloves. And over here, that giant tent over there is the uh, animal enclosure. It's called the animal arc for your dog, cat, household, uh, household pets. Oh, wow. So yeah, protect them. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, I was like, hey, I guess I could probably just throw my kid in there or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but then I, now I'm seeing the grass. I'm like, that makes sense. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that's awesome, man. So that's that's really cool. I like that you guys are thinking about every form of life yes, and sir. how to protect it. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, awesome. yeah. So what makes us unique from other uh, you know PPE manufacturers is that we are bringing uh, the you know professional grade things that are used by agencies, federal agencies, military units. As a matter of fact, this is made in Czech Republic. The Czech Republic military uses this gas mask right now uh, for their units, and we're trying to bring the. We don't want any barriers between the civilian world and professional world, right? Yeah. That's why we, we went out to find the best possible grade materials and, and, and products for children. Uh, we have, you know, hazmat solutions for children. We don't know of anyone who's doing hazmat suits, like yeah. professional grade tested certified ones for children. Um, and the uh, the pet one being a new item is that, you know, some people, some people treat their pets like their own children. So, yeah. you know, yeah. why not go for that uh, that route as well? So, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, my dogs are definitely that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, cool. Well, Eric, thanks, man. Guys, check out Mira Safety. We carry y'all's gas mask on our website. In fact, actually, I think you need to order more. I think we might be running sure. low. Yeah. Uh, so, but if we are running low, just sign up for the product notification. We'll get some more in stock. But Eric, thanks again, man. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. We're over here now with Mossberg, and we were walking by here, and I saw this guy with that guy that interested me quite a bit. We got Scott here to talk about it. Scott, thank you so much, man. And what, what do we got going on here? So what we've got here, we've got the new 940 Pro Tactical version. This is our new, latest, greatest, you know, uh, semi-auto action that we use. It's based on the JM Pro 3-gun model. And so what we've got here is a tactical configuration. So the difference is we've got an 18 and a half inch barrel, a seven round tube. We still have all the cool features of the JM Pro with the oversized controls and the like the beveled out loading port, you know, and make it real easy to quad load and dual load this or just load it with gloves and things like that. Right. And then the really cool feature of this 940 Tactical is the fact that we've got the sight base machined into the receiver. So anything in like the micro dots with a like a shield or Zeb footprint will right. fit right on there. And the cool thing about that is it sets super low. So right. it, you don't mess up your cheek weld. You look right down the barrel. You look right at the bead as well. So we've got the bead. And then down here at the end, you'll see there's a little flare. Well, we have interchangeable chokes as well nice. in the 940 Tactical. So these are retail about 1120. I've seen them around right about 900 bucks. And if you want to see more of them, you know, classic firearms will show you where to go. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, man. I'm looking to get a couple of these in stock because I really want to run this guy and compare it to like other different types of tactical shotguns because one major advantage, like you said, is having that where that's that's inlaid. Absolutely. And now my cheek weld doesn't change because you can, a lot of them, you know, have the Picatinny on top, which is fine, but the moment you put an optic on that, now you're yeah. off the gun. Then you got to yeah. put a little buffer here. You got to right. put out, you know, some, yeah. uh, you know, uh, pool noodle material or something, you gotta, you gotta make your cheek weld come up a little higher. Yeah, we've, it's been very well received. Uh, this 
for example, we've got a hollow sun on here, and this is the 507C. It's got the circle dot. Yeah. And it works really well in a shotgun because that circle gives you the cool yeah. spread, and then the dot's more precise. But I've, I mean, I've personally made slug shots at 100 yards with this, you know, yeah. not a problem with like the federal, you know, yeah. low recoil slugs. Yeah. So it's a really slick uh, package. Uh, Semi auto, like I said, it, it runs right around 900 bucks, is what I've been seeing it for. And uh, we're just we're just excited to get it out. It, it's it's a great addition to the 940 line. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And like I said, I'm excited to shoot it. And Scott, thanks for the information. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Thank you. We just ran into Jacob with Cloud Defensive, and he's like, "Hey, man, I got some uh, bright things. I'll show you really quick if you take the time." And it's like, "All right, yeah, sure, absolutely." So what do you got going on, man? All right, so new for this year, we've got the Rain 2.0. This is the ODG. We got it in FDE clear black favorite ODG. It's got 71,000 candela. 1400 lumens. This right here is a clear EDC dual. It's got a low, low, high function right there, full size rain. Um, 18650 battery is about 150 hour runtime. Really? Yeah. Um, got a few mounts available and this right here, the switchback. Yeah, which is that's pretty a nice cool. feature because I've dropped flashlights before. So. Yes. <laughs> We've got a um, really cool feature with the reins if you're not familiar with our lights. A lot of flashlights, when you're running them on a weapon, you got it on and you got recoil, yeah. you got the battery bounce, so your yeah. light's doing the flicker. Right. So inside here, we've got a plastic screw that clamps down and holds that battery tight so it's not bouncing up and down against that spring that's here nice. in recoil. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a great feature to have. And I've run Cloud Defensive on a couple of different firearms now. They've always right. worked really, really well. As we yeah. The yeah. Owl, the Rain 1.0. Yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. I, yeah. Start, I pre ordered the Owl long before and then jumped in here with these lights yeah. love them man that's that's a solid looking light too yeah. thank you but cool jacob thank you so much man all right thanks yeah. i appreciate it yeah absolutely guys check out cloud defensive now we're over here with CAC, and we got Chris to talk about a little bit. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, no worries. A, yeah, absolutely. Now, from my understanding, you guys are a manufacturer of AR parts and all American made. That's correct. We, uh, we've we got two facilities. One's in Missouri, uh, Albany, Missouri, Northwest Corner. We've got another facility in uh, Southern California. We made over six million parts last year alone. Uh, our main thing is going to be buffers, but we do all the small parts for lower parts. Um, buffer tubes, charging handles, that kind of stuff. We're not a spring company, you know, so we obviously buy those, but uh, everything else that you're seeing on this table, we make in-house, man. Uh, we've got around 50 Swiss machines at our Southern California location. We've got a fully automated barrel cell, which we also make barrels and blanks uh, in Missouri that's completely automated. And uh, yeah, man, we're just trying to pump out as many parts as we can. We supply a ton of a ton of manufacturers in the space, right? Yeah. So a lot of people don't know who we are, not because we don't have a big presence, but because our main gig, 98% of our business is supplying larger companies in this space. Yeah. Like we sell them small parts, they use those guns to, or those parts to build guns and, right. and move them along, you know? So yeah. um, that's, that's kind of my, my, our deal, I guess. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. So as I've been kind of looking over the table, um, uh, again, AR parts, you guys got them, that's great. But one thing that actually caught my eye is like your adjustable weight buffer. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, tell us about that. Yeah, for sure. So we actually make, uh, like I said, buffers is kind of our bread and butter. We actually have the ability in-house to build and ship about 3,000 a day, uh, which there's not a lot of companies in this in this industry who can do that, right? So um, we've got a ton of different color tips that we use. Uh, it's pretty much up to the manufacturer what they're looking for. We can do pretty much any length, any weight. We make them for PCCs. We make them for AR-15, 308, uh, weird caliber stuff. The adjustable kits that you're talking about specifically, we make them for a PCC. Uh, so you'll get what you'll get is you'll get a, an actual nine millimeter or what we call a PCC body. You'll get the t a couple different color tips and then you'll get a couple weights. You'll get three tungsten, three steel, and three aluminum. Uh, and the same thing, we make it in an AR-15 configuration as well. So, right. so uh, that, that's really that's really cool because I'm thinking, you know, running suppressors, running, you know, different types of uh, ammunition and stuff. That, that's neat. Yeah, so it allows, it allows people to tune guns to their actual application, yeah. whether they're reloading, maybe they're using a suppressor, like you said, or maybe maybe the barrel is shorter, you know, so they don't want the violent recoil of, of whatever they're using, so they can actually tune the gun to work best. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Well, that's great. Um, uh, and on top of that, I'm I actually kind of want to try one of those out. Yeah, uh, one. <laughs> heck yeah, man, that, that's awesome, man. Uh, so great, dude. So again, I'm really happy to hear everything's American made too. All that's all made in house. Yeah. And uh, it, what you got? I was gonna say, that if you guys see, I don't know if the camera can see or not. So these these belt fed rounds that look all shiny and bright and kind of bring people to the table. If you don't mind me touching on that for one second really quick, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting story. So these rounds are actually for a government contract, right? We do, we obviously do commercial stuff. That's our main gig, but we also do government contracts. We actually just got done supplying barrels to the U.S. government. Uh, we've got a couple other small parts that are actually AR-15 components that we supply the U.S. government. And so uh, 
these are actually dummy rounds. So uh, a while back we were looking through different things to bid on and we saw the dummy round contract. Yeah. Well, the 50, these are 50 cal. The 50 cal round, they used to have a two piece design where they took the actual base and the bullet and then crimped it together with no primer and no powder. Yeah. And then they would coat it and they would use it for training purposes or whatever. Well, modern machining allows us to make that out of one piece. Right. So the owner of our company, he actually looked at that and was like, this design is terrible. Mm -hmm. And so he wrote Picatinny Arsenal an email and was like, you guys should probably consider redesigning this. So they were like, hmm, you're actually right. This design is really bad. Yeah. So they redid the print completely yeah. and then uh, put it out for bid and we won. We actually got the 50 cal, the 76251, and then the 223556. It's a five year contract. Wow. So well, we're talking, man. yeah, thanks, Manny. We're, we're real proud of it. Uh, like I said, it looks all shiny and stuff, but it's yeah. pretty much just to showcase what our capabilities are here, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, AR-15 is our is our main game. Government con contracts is just a side thing, but we have a lot of capability, man. Yeah. We can do pretty much whatever the customer's looking for. Yeah, so. that, that's awesome. And, and when you say customer too, if customers uh, were interested, because I know you say you do a lot of parts for manufacturers, which is great, yeah. but if customers wanted to buy your stuff and build an AR from your, you know, from your website or whatever, that's something they can do? Absolutely, you can go on our website and, and literally get an 80% lower. We just started doing serialized lowers as well uh, out of the Missouri plant. You can get lower parts kits, buffer tube kits, everything that you need to build an NAR from our website. It's kakindustry.com. Yeah. Um, and uh, we got discount codes going on right now, too. If you shoot us an email, uh, we'll answer it really, really quick. Parts go out or orders go out within 48 hours. Yeah. If you actually call us and you're like, hey, man, I got a question about this. This is something maybe I need or I have a problem. You get actual real person on the phone. Yeah. yeah it, it's probably going to be me. Yeah. You know, so, right. And I'll, I'll help you figure out what you need and, and get you what you need. Dude, so That's awesome, man. I mean, Probably should start thinking about maybe bringing you guys on the website. Right. But hey, no Chris, worries. Yeah, hey, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you guys coming by, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. We're over here now with Matrix Arms. We've got Alan over here. Thanks for taking the time with us yeah, today, absolutely. man. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, man. And and uh, so you you threw this pistol in my hands. I was like, that's actually pretty freaking cool. Yep. And then yeah, you were telling me about all your CNCing, and then on top of that, all the stuff you do for other manufacturers. Absolutely. Give us a rundown, man. Talk about what's on the table. Yep. So uh, Alan Ferris, owner of Matrix Arms here. Uh, we're a large OEM manufacturer. Manufacturers. We do. We've done uh, variance work for over 100 companies. Uh, we've manufactured over a million AR receivers since 2015. We do. We've got 58,000 square feet of manufacturing space. Uh, over 30 robo drills alone. We've got uh, triple turret Nakamura lathes, six pallet uh, horizontal machines as well. Um, we started as a large OEM manufacturer. What's unique this year for us uh, is our MX19 handgun. Uh, so the entire frame is manufactured out of a solid billet, 7075 aluminum. Um, we manufacture the entire frame, the slide and the barrel in house, as well as the blocks that the slide actually rides on. Compatible with Glock 19 parts, it takes Glock 19 uh, slide parts kit as well as a trigger. Um, the only thing that isn't is our, our proprietary uh, riding blocks for the slide. So you can see here. Um, our riding blocks here we manufacture, so we can hold super tight tolerances because we manufacture pretty much every major component on the entire firearm. So this right now is on a, a pre-order product. Um, we're going to be launching in about four weeks for the first time on this. Yeah, and I also noticed too, look, you have a, like a nylon buffer in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So we've got a nylon buffer. Um, so when the slide kicks back, instead of it being metal on metal, it's metal into a high impact nylon buffer, which reduces the recoil. Yeah. So that's our main main part of our uh, gun that we're patenting on yeah. that, um, which one of the main things to make it work as an entire aluminum frame on the Glock platform. Yep. So we've got a couple different slide variations. As I mentioned, we manufacture all of our own slides, barrels, we manufacture the entire frame. And then um, we've got a uh, carbon fiber handguard here. Our carbon fiber handguard's got an adapter on it, so it works with our standard barrel nut. Uh, it's 1.7 inside diameter, so it works with uh, silencers. And um, your pick rail here is a level playing field with your upper, which I can probably demonstrate a little bit better here on our AR-15. Um, the other thing that's unique about our AR-15 is we've got our dual charge upper here. So you can charge it either from the side or you can charge it from the rear. It's non-reciprocating, obviously that's great, doesn't move when you're shooting it. We offer the same thing in our 9mm as well. This is our AR-9 platform. Our AR-9, we've got a patented last round bolt hold open system in our lower, so that takes Glock magazines. 
I like that you guys kept the side charging on too. That's cool. Right. Yeah. And so we, we keep we keep the rear charge on there. A lot of the military guys, you know, really like to keep the rear charge. Uh, we had an old side charge design that was just the side charge, and we really wanted to, you know, yeah. have, have some yeah. pretty much for everybody. Right. Um, so we've got a, a drive shaft mechanism here in our lower receiver. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio on our last round bolt hold open works every single time, no matter what magazines you're using. So that's one thing a lot of the last round bolt hold open guys work, you know, 80% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. For me personally, I'd rather have it either work every time or never, never. so yeah. that you, at least it's consistent, you know, you know how often it's going to work. Yeah, and you can train better that way too. Right, absolutely, yep, yep. Very cool, man. That's, that's pretty impressive. Your barrels, by the way. That, those look really nice as well. Yeah, yep, so that's our AR-15 barrel there. Um, yep, we've got a drop-in trigger for our AR-15 as well. Um, we do 80% lowers, uh, upper and lower receivers for AR-15 9mm, and we're launching a 308 billet set as well. Yep. Yeah, well, well, that's awesome, man. And so thank you for taking the time to you know let us learn a little bit about your company. Absolutely, you yeah, guys got you. some beautiful products out here. Thank you. Um, uh, I'll be honest, I, I need to shoot some of it, really. Yep. <laughs> thank you so you much, get Alan. Get your hands and, and get you shooting them uh, immediately. Yeah, let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Thanks, thank man. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank yep. you. Thanks for having us. Yep. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the coverage. There you go. You got it out that time. Uh, it has been a pretty good show, actually, and we've had a good time here. Again, some of the items that stuck out in my mind have been like the Fold AR, a couple yeah. of the things uh, that we saw. Staccato. Oh, Staccato, yes. And let us know down in your comment what's your favorite, what's going to be your next purchase at ClassicFirearms.com. Oh, yeah. And uh, while you're there, of course, don't forget the giveaway, the Barrett oh, yeah. M82A1 that's currently being given away. Code what again? 2A. For obvious reasons. Yep. That being said, again, hope you guys have enjoyed it. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.